Welcome to my latest YouTube video. I'm Ross Rosenberg. I'm the author of The Human Magnet Syndrome and the creator of The Codependency Cure. Today I'm going to talk more about my Observe Don't Absorb technique. I will be referring to it as ODA. The Observe Don't Absorb technique has an interesting history. It was invented while I was trying to extricate myself from a relationship with a woman who had borderline personality disorder. It was created from my attempts to survive what was hellish retribution, abuse, just for me disagreeing and or wanting something that wasn't harmful to me. It saved me. And I know it has helped others. All of the ODA videos have been, been viewed on YouTube about 3 million times. I couldn't be more happy that my own survival techniques, which ultimately turned into techniques that I taught my psychotherapy clients, which then of course became YouTube videos and part of my educational program. I'm just so pleased that it helps so many people. Before I tell you about the purpose of this video, which is, is essentially how to use observe, don't absorb on the voices or the narratives or the thinking in your head, before I talk about that, let me give you a brief introduction or summary of Observe, Don't Absorb. The technique was created as a result of having no control over a person with borderline personality disorder whose intent was to hurt me because of her feelings, her experience of abandonment. Now, as many of us already know, and as, as I have talked about in great detail, in my four borderline personality disorder videos that I have on YouTube, that it's not exactly a situation where the person with BPD is being abandoned or hurt. It's a perception of it. And often these perceptions are skewed and distorted. And when they are triggered or activated, they want to hurt the person and create harm, uh, retribution, so that that person will feel sorry or feel bad enough that they won't ever hurt them again. Now, this video, the purpose of it is not to go into BPD. Like I said, I have many other videos on the topic, but for a person who is in a relationship with an individual who has borderline personality disorder, or for that matter, someone who has narcissistic personality disorder, or who has antisocial personality disorder, or other uh, types of people uh, with uh, mental health struggles or mental health disorders, where their power and control over others is to involve them into an argument for the purpose of dominating, controlling, and punishing. These type of people are best dealt with when we decide to not enter the domain in which they are the strongest and most equipped to kick our butts. I borrowed George Bernard Shaw's saying, never wrestle with pigs, you'll get dirty, and besides the pig likes to wrestle. I borrowed it to demonstrate or to illustrate how we shouldn't engage or fight with narcissists, because when we do, they have and always will have the upper edge. They love to fight, they love to wrestle. Analogously, they are the pig wrestlers who have spent their whole life surviving by wrestling. They know every inch of their wrestling ring. And their only chance of beating us up, hurting us, or ultimately controlling us, is to get us to respond and fight them. I discuss this in detail in many other videos where I talk about false power syndrome, and I talk about other um, techniques or strategies that they pull us into a conversation for the ultimate purpose of getting us to fight them. So if you understand that the pig wrestler is going to always kick your butt in the wrestling ring and that you'll never be good at wrestling because you don't have the background or the motivation to fight dirty and to be duplicitous and dishonest and manipulative, that you're going to lose. And if you recognize the concept that I created, a false power syndrome, that when you are triggered to fight, you are filled with, with uh, 
energy and, uh, and, and anger and, and this feeling of, of focus and strength. It's like your anger makes you not only feel stronger, but it makes you feel invincible and more able to fight. Please trust me that when the narcissist triggers your false power syndrome, and that makes you believe that you can either engage them in an argument, a fight, or even hold your own in a conversation that was designed to pull you into the wrestling ring in order to get more control or reestablish control. Once you understand the futility of fighting in the wrestling ring, the futility of believing you could win, and the result of every wrestling match with the pig, you will know that the only way to keep yourself safe, to get out of a relationship that is smothering you, that is choking you, that is keeping you from ever loving yourself, respecting yourself and taking care of yourself, is you have to find a way to win the fight. And the fight does not involve wrestling. It involves disassociation. Yes. Usually the term disassociation is used um, as a clinical description of a disorder in which we, because of trauma, are removed from our feelings, our emotional selves, our affect. With the observed and absorbed technique, it requires a controlled and healthy version of disassociation. And when you are able to keep the narcissist from getting under your skin, triggering you or activating you to want to fight, to want to go running in that wrestling ring and say, you can't do that, or I'm going to do this, you're, you're done, you've lost. So with the understanding that the narcissist, the pig, wants you in a wrestling ring, that when you think you will win, that's part of the problem, the narcissist's strength is in triggering you to fight then you now know that you must figure out a way to disassociate from the normal human emotional experience of someone trying to hurt you. And this is very important to understand, very important, because I don't believe disassociation is a healthy reaction for most people. But to keep yourself safe, with a narcissist who has so much control over you. And many of us who identify themselves as codependent or SLDs know very, very well that sometimes there's nowhere to go and you are stuck. So ODA is the very best technique to protect yourself, whether or not there's no escape um, path and you're just stuck where you are for a while, or you need to keep things in control or keep control of yourself so you don't throw yourself into the wrestling ring and get your butt kicked again. So this healthy, controlled disassociation is equal to the term observe. If you know the narcissist or the pig, their strategy is to get you to want to fight, and you know that you fight because you get angry or triggered, that is called absorb. Think about it. Absorbing is when you let them into your system and you get sick. It's like a poison gets into you and that poison makes you want to do things that are bad for you. It hurts you. So you have to find a way to observe the narcissist or watch him or her try to hurt you. And that is the disassociation part and to avoid absorbing or getting triggered or activated or let the toxins inside of you. So then you get sick. You know, if you let an allergy, uh, if you're allergic to certain perfumes and you get it on your skin, you're going to break out. If there is a, uh, a flu or a virus uh, out there, if you breathe in the, uh, the virus, you're going to get sick. So when you watch or observe the narcissist, and you do everything you can to not let them inside of you absorb, you then are outside of the wrestling ring, 
outside of where it is dangerous and you have taken the home field advantage away from the narcissist, you've taken away their power and control. And people who utilize ODA say over and over again, it changed their lives. The purpose of this video is to not go into the details of the observe, don't absorb technique. I have two or three videos on YouTube and I have a 90 minute seminar video extremely detailed video available at my selfloverecovery.com website and I highly recommend that. But today I want to talk about how to fight back with the voices in your head. Let me tell you what I mean about voices. These are not real voices. These are not a product of mental illness, uh, schizophrenia or other functions. These are the thoughts, uh, the dialogue you have in your head that you tell yourself. For example, if you are uh, in a relationship with a pathological narcissist and you're an SLD, self-love deficient or codependent, it is likely you have been gaslit or you have been manipulated to believe that there are certain things that are inherently wrong about you, inherently bad, inherently weak, um, inherently just not good enough. And that keeps you from deciding to leave the relationship or it keeps you disabled emotionally because you've lost faith and confidence in yourself, in your ability to get out of the narcissist web and trap and to either find freedom, safety to eventually start over again. If they can get you to say, no one will love me. I am ugly. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I have ADD. I am, I have depressive disorder. I drink too much. Um, if they can get you to believe there is something wrong with you that will keep you from being happy outside of the relationship, that is as powerful than them physically beating you up in the wrestling ring. Now I've talked about the phenomenon, identify the voices in your head as the person who originally put them there. And so I will not go into this in this video, but I will summarize it by saying, if you're in therapy or you are getting professional help, it's often important to realize that these thoughts that you tell yourself came from somewhere else. And it's important to identify where they came from. And once you identified where they came from, you can then more easily differentiate that this is not you telling yourself that there's something wrong or not good enough, but it's a gaslit narrative that was put in there uh, purposefully by a scheming, manipulative, pathological narcissist. Or it was put there just because of chronic neglect, abuse, and harm by a narcissist or an individual. So now that we recognize there is a physical wrestling ring, and there's an emotional wrestling ring, that the emotional wrestling ring comes from thoughts or statements. And those statements come from other people that we eventually identify as our own thoughts emanating from ourselves. For example, if you are very shy and have social anxiety um, and your attempts, and of course, if you're an SLD, you have terrible self-esteem and poor shame and loneliness and all that other stuff. And you, you have been gaslit to believe that no one will ever like you because you're just too shy and nervous. And you are reminded over and over again, or you have been um, tricked into uh, believing it, or you have been gaslit by your narcissist's systematic maneuvers to make you fail in social situations. You will tell yourself, no one likes me. I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm weird. And that will be your voice, your thought. And when you get that thought and you believe it's from you, then you protect yourself by avoiding others so you don't get disappointed. So that voice really is from another person that you've identified. So here is how the observe, don't absorb technique works with these voices, with the emotional wrestling ring with the gaslit narratives in your head. It's important 
that you identify and know who is the aggressor who wants you to fight, who is trying to antagonize you to fight, who knows, who plans on if you fight them, you will naturally lose. So you have to identify the pig wrestler and understand that they win by you getting to the wrestling ring. So with the emotional wrestling ring and the voices, um, the thoughts in your head, it's incumbent upon you or with the help of a therapist to take a look at these self-defeating, negative, uh, demeaning thoughts and find out where they came from because they did not come from you originally. If you're an SLD and have been gaslit, they have been instilled in you. Find that person or people who put those in your head. Actually, once you do that, you'll have less shame because you'll know that you're a victim of this insidious, horrible manipulation. And there's just not you telling you that you're bad. With the voice identified, so it could be your mother or your father or your family or your spouse or just your boss or whoever, then you have to treat the voice and the person who put it in there as the pig wrestler. You have to use the observe, don't absorb techniques. You have to be able to observe the voice. I will never have friends. There's something that's just inherently broken about me. I am not handsome enough. I am not smart enough. The voice you identified is not you and and the intention is if you believe the voice, you are weakened. Then you do observe, don't absorb. You're watching, you know that the voice gains control if you believe it and if you internalize it. That's absorb. You decide to not absorb or be triggered or be activated by the voice. So, and in other words, you go to a work function and there is an opportunity to meet someone. And all of a sudden you say, oh, she's never gonna like me because I'm just not interesting enough. I'm boring, I'm so anxious. You stop yourself and you look at that statement. She won't like me because I'm boring and not interesting. And you ask yourself, okay, is that my voice? Does, does that come from me? And you identify that it did not. And if you can, identify where it came from. And then with a face of the person or people who put that thought, that emotion, that voice into your head, you can decide you're going to observe that and not absorb it, not believe it and take it inside. When you observe that voice and understand that it was actually never factual information that you accept it at face value, you decide to not accept it and not react to it. The lack of reaction keeps you from your fight or flight response, which is you got to do something to protect yourself. And more often than not, the SLD or the codependent will run from the relationship. It keeps you from sabotaging yourself and furthering or perpetuating the self-fulfilling prophecy, which is simply when you believe that something bad is going to happen to you or you're going to do something bad to yourself. Um, for example, you have the thought that no one will like you because you are inherently nerdy and anxious and your worry about that makes you nerdy and anxious or that facilitates or promotes a reaction in a person to like not think you're very interesting or likable. It's the fear and your self-fulfillment of that fear that makes it actually happen. So then what we have is we have the observe, don't absorb technique. Um, again, I wanna remind you that the observe, don't absorb technique is complicated and deserves a full explanation. On my YouTube videos, it gets about 10, 15 minutes worth of time. Consider getting the Observe, Don't Absorb video, the 90 minute video at Self Love Recovery Institute, or 
watch some of the excerpts or videos on YouTube. But what I want you to know now, which is a newer idea, is how to fight your nemesis. And that is not just the narcissist, the narcissist pig who wants you to fight them in the wrestling ring so they can kick your butt and you can lose and then eventually not want to fight anymore because you're just tired of losing. No, it's the voices in your head that come from prolonged exposure to narcissistic abuse, belittling, or gaslighting. I hope this extra information about my observe, don't absorb technique is helpful to you. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube videos. And if you're not, please do. And thank you for just uh, supporting my work all these years. I really appreciate our work together to build better foundations of self-love, whether it's one person at a time or in communities, because the more that we love ourselves, the less these narcissists can control and hurt us. Take care and goodbye.